Support for Radio Friends comes from LaBrunere Financial, where they work to ensure a lifetime of financial security for people from all walks of life, from investment services to retirement plans. If you're looking for a trustworthy company that has the experience and knowledge to put your interests first, contact LaBrunere Financial, a community-based investment counseling firm since 1966. Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends on this Monday, December the 21st. As we always say, it's a pleasure to have you with us. And it's a pleasure to have my next guest with us, who I also am proud to call a friend of mine. This is Scott Bradley from Carpet One. Good to have you here, Scott. Paul. Um, we have been doing segments with you for some time now, talking about eco-friendly floor coverings. And you brought in something today that probably would be one of the most eco-friendly floors that you can have because it's renewable and renewable and renewable and renewable <laughs> and it lasts forever it, yeah with the proper care and maintenance yeah and that's cork yes cork flooring cork flooring yeah. so you were telling me what was it uh one office building had cork oh, flooring the down? united states chamber of commerce has uh cork flooring that was put down in the 30s it was a half inch cork and they've glued it down and and it has worn out uh, yeah it has not worn out it has it not looks worn great. out okay yeah yep and it can look beautiful too absolutely so you brought along several uh samples tell, tell us about how the cork is made yeah it's uh it's rather fascinating it's the cork tree and the best cork is from portugal but uh they have special craftspeople that uh, peel the bark off of the cork tree, and they never harvest more than 50% of the bark of the cork uh, so that the tree still has bark to protect itself. Right, and the tree yeah. keeps living. It's not cut down. That's right. So it is renewing it over and over again. Yes, and the the manufacturing, the, the cork bark is, you know, what they don't use for flooring. They use it for other things. So. Right, right. So tell us about what you have here and how you can sure. use it, utilize it in the house. Yeah, I think the most durable uh, way of using a cork floor is the glue down method. They have various thicknesses of cork to glue down: half inch, mm -hmm. five sixteenths, three sixteenths. But uh, they also have natural color where they'll bake it to get it darker or more ambered and lighter colors. So it's not a stain on that one. It's so, just it's baked to get it the color they want. Yeah, so, some, of the, some of the products. And then they also have a stain. That the, it's a water-based stain and yeah. a water-based protectant that they put on the surface of the product to now make it Now, you brought a plank along here today, which is put together by squares. Yeah, these are these are rectangles, and they're twelve by thirty six inches. Hold that up, hold and, that up for people who are uh, watching it on television. Uh, I mean, that looks that looks beautiful. Yeah, it, it, it has somewhat of an antique look to it, also. Yes, and it's uh, put together kind of like Legos. It's snapped together. It's probably the most common build of a cork floor. And um, is it water? It's waterproof. No, it is not waterproof. It's not waterproof. So if you if you've got a wet area, this would not be. The, okay. the choice, and it also fades in direct sunlight. So if you have direct sunlight, this would not be. What a about good scratching? Uh, it's fairly scratch resistant. Uh, denting. Most cork floors are 100 percent dent resistant because they pop back. Won't they? Yes, but it depends. I've seen some where you know if it's an extremely small point load, uh, that can permanently okay. damage it. But it does self heal. Okay, it's quite amazing. If you want to see this in person, or you want more information, give them a call or stop by where. At uh, Carpet One on the business loop. Okay, your phone number? 573-449-0081. Scott, always a pleasure chatting with you, and I, I look forward, you're kind of like a professor, uh, uh, oh. educating mm. us on yeah. eco-friendly flooring. I appreciate uh, yeah, it. Yeah, thank you. You All have right. to read my white papers. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas <laughs> yeah. to you. Thank you. Merry Christmas. All right. Now we're going to talk about a new book for young people. It's called Missing Letters an alphabet book. If you're my age when you were in school, you probably remember Dick and Jane and Sally and Spot, the readers. That's how I learned to read. I want to introduce you to Samuel Otten. You've written this book, 
Would you compare this to the Dick and Jane and Sally book? Well, Dick and Jane were created here at Mizzou in the College of Education. And they I'm were? A, yeah, and I'm a professor in the College of Education, so I'm definitely happy to be carrying on the legacy of, of books for children. Yeah, Dick and Jane, Sally, and Spot. But um, they had a cat, too, didn't they? Yeah, I think so. Puff. Puff was a cat. <laughs> I've been that from the first grade. Tell me about your book, The Missing Letters in Alphabet Book. So it's a different kind of alphabet book. Um, so being an education professor and having children of my own, I've seen a lot of alphabet books. But I noticed that they're basically all focusing on the same part of the words. They always are using the letters at the start of words. Um, but actually, children don't really have difficulty. They don't have that much difficulty hearing the sounds at the start of words. That's actually what they kind of pick up first. And so all these alphabet books are really reemphasizing something that they can hear pretty well, which is the first sound of, of words. And everything is il illustrated. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking here. It says, I'm looking at a barn with a, with a horse in the barn, and it says M is important because without M, farm, and then you look at the next page, becomes far. Yeah. So you take the M away and farm becomes far away. Yeah. So the idea with taking the letters away is now you can emphasize the importance of that letter by comparing what it sounds like with the letter and without the letter. And you can do that at the start of the word. You can do that in the middle of the word. You can do that at the end of the word. And it, it helps the kid's ear yeah. start to find that sound. And the illustration is wonderful. Like K is important because without K, peaks simply becomes peas. Yep. And that's a fun one at our dinner table now. When we have peas, my kids will stack them up and make the peaks because they'll remember that little joke. <laughs> so was this your idea? Uh, this, this book was your idea? Yeah. So I had the idea of pulling the letters out to emphasize them. And the initial idea was actually with my kids with the word Legos, just because they play with Legos. And we took the O away and it makes legs. And we kind of laughed as a family about that, that it'd be funny to imagine Legos as legs. Yeah. And that was where I got the spark of thinking I could do that with all the letters and put that together into an alphabet book. Here's another example. <laughs> a is important because without an A, acorn becomes corn. Yeah, and I think so. Leon Thomas is the illustrator, and I think he really emphasized the hardness, and you imagine almost biting that corn. But if it's acorns, like chipping your tooth and kind of hurting yeah. you. Yeah. Now, is this book... In, in the schools now? So I have some librarians that have been picking it up. It's only been out for about a month, um, but I am spreading the word to teachers and been getting really good feedback so far to help kids kind of catch up on the letter sounds, especially if they're kind of behind a little bit with the pandemic. Yeah, It's a way that the kids can play with language and have fun. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's also available online here locally. It's at Skylark and Distant Planet as well. Yeah. Well, I wish you the very best of luck. When do you think, um, when do you think this could become the next Dick and Jane and Sally book. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. I hope so. And I really hope to, to do well by the illustrator, Leon Thomas, who's yeah. a Mizzou graduate. And uh, he deserves probably most of the credit to become famous for these amazing okay. illustrations. Thank you so much. <laughs> so again, if people want to pick this book up, where? Missinglettersbook.com can point you in the right direction. And if you're locally to Columbia, you can go to Skylark or Distant Planet. You got it. Thank you, Samuel. I, I, I wish you the best of luck with the book. I appreciate you taking time out to visit with us about it today. Very happy to be here. All right. Something you'd like to hear or see, drop me an email, pepperp, Missouri.edu. Bye-bye.